turning around. He's coming back, he's coming back. It's up to me. One man alone, betrayed by the country he loves. Now it's last hope in the final hour of need. Before time began, there was a guy. Hyped for a movie, and then there was another movie that the guy was also hyped for. But that movie wasn't performing so well. So the guy had a mission. He was but one man, alone, betrayed by the country he loves. He set out to get people to go to the cinemas and watch Transformers 1. Awesome! That's what I'm talking about! Now is the time for us to stand up, together, as one. TF hype guy, hey <laughs> uh, Well, that was a, a epic introduction. <laughs> I just can't imagine how busy your life. <laughs> it's like a snap of a finger. Last week it was very busy, just straight social media, and then it happened that this week is my midterms. For um, so I have like a lot of stuff to go like during going on right now in real life. So I'm currently balancing using Twitter for like three hours a day and then also balancing trying to do all my work and stuff going on in real life so it's been tough <laughs> you actually made twitter very entertaining for me usually i find twitter to be the worst of the worst but i would just see someone i'd see a tweet and i'm like oh, okay uh, you've replied to this and it's like go watch transformers one <laughs> yeah yeah i was on a roll for a while there and then i, just, I started to slow i can't keep it up forever <laughs> okay trace back the first tweet that that did that what was what was the first tweet that did that and then it just like blew up i was i kept seeing the the bad reviews for joker coming out uh and i was really really just like huh i wonder if i can capitalize on this somehow i try and get people to see transformers instead of the joker <laughs> so every basically every single discussing film post that mentioned the joker i mentioned transformers one and so you do you go to uni right you're at school right now yeah so are you taking a class in marketing or something <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have asked me that, and I actually am. That hasn't started yet, that's going to be next semester, but it's going to be interesting going into that um, after all this happened. Well, you're going to have a hell of a CV to show those guys, it's like... <laughs> I guess so. You don't even need to take the class anymore, you could just you just passed it straight away. <laughs> Look at my record. Look at everything I've accomplished in about a weekend. Stop saying that! Trade by the country. Oh my goodness, I'm in the car, okay? You're not alone. And I for sure was certain that Joker would demolish Transformers 1. Much to my shock, when I went to go watch the film when it debuted in the UK on the weekend, I asked for staff, was it busy on Friday night for Transformers 1? And they said the cinema was absolutely packed. And I was like, well, what about Joker? Was it all for Joker or something? Like, are you sure it was was all for Transformers 1? They said, no, it was all for Transformers because they were getting all the posters and stuff. And then I told them I was a big fan, so they gave me a poster, a 3D poster. So a lot of people were seeing this film in 3D, actually. Honestly, I recommend it. It's, it's really good in 3D, and I don't usually go see 3D movies. I feel like Transfers 1's marketing has been hit or miss. I can see the arguments for, well, you know, they had a bunch of competition which may have contributed, but at the same time there was a lot of ways that it could have just been marketed better as a more serious tone trailer, you know, because when I got out of the early screening, they had just released the second trailer, and I'm there going, oh my god, I'm so glad I watched this movie before that. It, it was, it's a very difficult movie to market, because you don't want to spoil too much, and if you don't spoil too much, then you kind of just don't have a movie. Like, especially it happened in the first trailer, there wasn't a lot to show, and the stuff that they did have to show uh, wasn't impressive <laughs> for, for people. I'm at 50-50 with the trailers because I generally thought the trailers were good trailers and I just felt like they could have balanced it out by having a serious trailer because I actually liked the first one. I think it captures the film actually pretty well in terms of its tone at the first, you know, hour, I guess, of the film. It's, it's really odd how the first trailer came out and the reactions were so negative to it uh, while I was so positive about it. It has, it's, it's like like moments where it's like it's trying to be like a little serious but then they just throw in random lines that just aren't even in the movie it's, it's really odd how they had this one scene uh with them in the bushes and they play it off as a joke in the first trailer but that's that's a pretty serious scene in the movie i mean i think the first trailer was a bad move in general it was a bad move even lorenzo mentioned that he thinks it's a bad move well there you go <laughs> 
because that is obviously the first impressions and a lot of people who you managed to encourage you know much bigger youtubers to go watch this film that i they've said the same thing they saw the trailer didn't think much of it because of the tone and and they watched it and they were so pleasantly surprised they really tried to market the movie for kids and it just didn't land because kids didn't go see the movie it's a kid film don't get me wrong but it, it, and i think it can definitely educate kids on a lot of things about society and democracy <laughs> tearing down the government very important lessons yeah it's it's a very important film about tearing down the government um but <laughs> for kids but it's actually <laughs> see i went to go watch it with my family and my friends and my mom specifically and i was curious about my mom's reaction um because my mom is a big fan of transformers and First and foremost, she, when she gets excited, man, she will yank your arm off to the absolute core. You know, if it's like, <laughs> if the moment hits her hard enough, like an emotional scene or like a giddy scene, it could be both a happy emotion or a sad emotion. Doesn't matter. Your arm's coming off. <laughs> Which is why I always, for my friends, I always put myself in the middle of my mom to make sure they don't get hurt. And they actually like, dude, please do not put me next to your mom. <laughs> So it was me and my sister, and my sister was not too happy about it. And quite surprisingly, actually, uh, because my voice was gone, I think my mum kind of took pity on me. So she actually took all of it out on my sister. <laughs> so, you know, when we get to those big moments in the, in, towards the end, if my mum can react that way, you know, a grown adult, yeah, anyone can. I remember watching some of the biggest moments in the film and I was tearing up, and it wasn't so like a hoo hoo kind of cry, you know, tears down my face. It was yeah, it genuine just, emotion. Yeah, I mean that happened to me uh, when I went to see it last Saturday. Uh, I just I went to the cinema, and it was packed, like absolutely packed, and people were, were were like just clapping, and they were cheering, and I was just sitting there, and I was just I was just tearing up. I was like, this is just incredible, and I can't believe that we're in this experience like this is happening this is the movie i would have always asked for growing up i wish i had this movie growing up this is the best like, this is the best transformer with my early screening we're all transformers fans right and i had never had that experience ever you know we're all transformers fans we're laughing at the jokes we get the jokes as well it's a movie for everyone of all ages doesn't matter if you're alone with with friends family doesn't matter it's a movie for everyone, everyone, absolutely everyone can get something out of this movie and, and love it a bit. Which is why it's been so good to see your character arc kind of like come full circle. You know, you finally get your buck. Seeing all of this engagement, you know, you convince people to go watch this film. And it, it's kind of like awesome to see people come back to you and go, wow, dude, you were right. It was a good movie. And, you know, when I made my review, for example, I was like seeing so many comments of like parents like saying, wow, I'm going to take my kids to go watch this film now. My DMs are like, they're at like in the 600 levels right now. 600 people DMing me telling me they went to see this movie <laughs> and telling me how much they loved it and stuff. And I'm like, oh boy, I need to get through these at some point in time. Uh, it's a lot. It's so heartwarming as well to see it finally get acknowledged by, um, you know, Josh Cooley, the director. You know, oh, that was awesome, yeah. Production uh, people who have been involved with the film. You know, it's just really cool to see them actually acknowledge the fan base, you know. And to actually like go, wow, okay, uh, you know, there's a lot of passion here. And people thinking, you know, oh, he's a plant or anything. I'm like, dude, I've met this guy, you know, and he is not a plant. He is legit. That was interesting to see. <laughs> I saw those tweets uh, before they were deleted of people trying to speculate that I was a plant and, and that um, I was doing it like I was a fake fan and stuff. And I was like, Wow, um, you have not been here for very long, have you? <laughs> we need to celebrate this. We need to actually come together on this. This isn't just about one person. This is about one person trying to share the love for a movie that we desperately want to succeed. You know, I, I remember at some point I turned on my Twitter and I just saw so many tweets on your name, like 60K tweets. And I'm like, oh my God, what's he said now? What's he done? And I'm out and look and it's like, <laughs> oh my God, he's responded to so much more. But that's a good thing because it's like, it's actually become a meme within itself. Yeah, it has. It has, it has. Do you know what's not dead? You know what's not bad? <laughs> and I love that kind of... And it, some people cut it off just as you're commenting as well like the text is half cut <laughs> it's just... yeah well that's another thing that's that's like part of the reason it blew up that much is that 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 whole subgenre of people just cropping my tweets and posting about it and getting hundreds of thousands of likes it's like 
that that was a really cool thing to see that how, how big those got the ksi one made me laugh a lot it's like <laughs> dude i know you go for a rough time to cheer him up. so i know you've got a bad song dude but hey you know so without cheer you up <laughs> transformers one he's having a rough time I, I was helping him out he's having a worse time now he's on britain's got talent he's become a judge <laughs> oh no yeah that's oh no all right definitely anyway regardless <laughs> talking about yeah. one. Um, yeah. let's talk about the box office because that's one thing you wanted to set a task for is to get the box office to a certain amount and like much everybody we want this film to be a massive success but how do we get the word out do you actually think that all of this engagement all of this uh, tweets has actually contributed at all to the success of the box office this weekend the thing is, it, I think it has, but not significantly. Like, because the thing is, right, no matter how much promotion you do on social media, the proportion of people who are on social media seeing these tweets is very small compared to the, the general audience, right? Because if you do the math, if I get 150 people, sorry, 100,000 100, people to see this movie, which is a lot of people, 100,000 people is a lot of people, which I honestly think I might have. I've, got, I've gotten like that many people to go see the movie. And if I did get to see that, like that many people see the movie, that's like only like $1.5 million. That's not much. Every time a week passes, uh, there's a drop, obviously, in the amount of people that see the movie. Uh, people study these percentages and someone sent me some of these percentages. And the percentages for last week, it only dropped 30% from the week before. And while that seems like not very impressive, it's Im it's impressive considering that the movie was removed from, I believe, 400 theaters in the US. So even though it was removed from 400 theaters, it still only was reduced by 30%, which is so when someone pointed that out to me and someone explained that to me, I was like, damn, I actually maybe have done something. That, that, that did cheer me up a lot. It made me feel like I actually did something. Well, with each person that goes to watch a movie, a branch gets created because they spread it on to other people who obviously don't have Twitter, who have no idea about the growing passion to want to get people to go see this film in the cinema. So it spreads around, you know, and it's a shame that the competition, you know, we've got The Wild Robot, which is a film I still want to see, and it's like, it's a shame that both movies just can't be appreciated. I would like both films to reach, you know, a billion at the box office and that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, I said that. I, I said that I would love for both films to do incredibly, but the reality of the situation is one is going to end up eating the other, and it, it's unfortunate that Charles Thomas ended up getting eaten, in a way. Um, the word of mouth for the Wild Robot is insanely high. It's so good, and that same word of mouth that could have been used for Charles Thomas is being used for the Wild Robot, and that's that's fine. You know, I'm happy for the Wild Robot. I'm happy it's getting a sequel because of how incredible the movie is you know it's just a sad reality of the way things work sometimes i feel like another reason why transfers one has become well, somewhat a success in the uk anyway is because the joker you know it didn't do so well and it hasn't done well in general which is quite surprising because even though it's arguably a you know whether or not you like the movie or not regardless it's still a huge ip it's the joker and that first film made a billion and you'd think that even if people saw bad reviews they still be curious to want to go see it and while i went to go watch it um i went to go watch it with my family and my mum turned around and said to me that was weird that's all she said i have to say about the movie she turned around and she looked at me and she goes that was weird i didn't even think i was going to go see it to be fair it was just kind of like oh, i might as well you know and i didn't read any reviews i didn't read any reviews because i I don't really care about what people think about a movie that I'm not really that interested in seeing. It's like, I'll judge it for myself, you know, whatever. Yeah. But Transfers yeah, 1, I was kind of more careful with looking at reviews because I, I didn't, the, I saw the IGN review and I'm like, well, it's IGN, who cares? You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's one, one opinion over another. You know, you look at the overwhelming positive. That's what I was trying to tell people. It's like, don't let one review ruin the whole experience for you because one person probably just didn't get it, and I, I read that review, and they didn't get a lot about the film at all. In fact, they made a lot of errors and mistakes, saying this and that didn't happen when it they clearly did. Did you not see the dozens of female Transformers in that film? You know? Yeah, it was that IG interview is it's an enigma in how weird it is because it's like the person never watched a movie. I don't I don't know what you watched, but this wasn't Transformers one. Yeah, it was a bizarre. He like saying Brian Tyler's music was like in background music, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Like. You can't just compliment the dude and say he came out with a good score for the previous film he did and then say the score he did in this movie was just like background noise. It's like, what? Brian Tyler's score was just breathtaking. Like, even my mum 
recognized the score. You know, she's watched Transfers Prime and she recognized that score immediately. It's like her hand was like, oh my God, I'd heard that music, you know. <laughs> Even if Transfers 1 is not a smashing success, I still think it's going to get a sequel just based on the strong reception the film has received. Like, I think that it, it's made clear to Paramount, Lorenzo, and Josh Cooley that fans want more of this. And now it's going to set a precedent for the Transformers live action movies. Like I said in my review, I was like, they need to up their game now. They need to up their game. Fans, it's been proven that they want more screen time at the robots. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's, that's why I think... A lot of people give the the GI Joe crossover a bunch of hate. They're like, "This is not gonna work. It's gonna be terrible." But I'm like, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I feel like it would make the human characters a lot more compelling because it's characters that people can actually recognize and and you know they know about. You know. I think it's just because it's like the crossover, the Marvel one and B tie in stuff. But I said in yeah. my I did a video on GI Joe and I said, "Look, it could be really good, and I like to be proven wrong. You know, I may not be vibing with it right now." But I like to be proven wrong because I like to be surprised. And I think if they have someone like Chris Hensworth, I think he could actually make the film for me because he did it for this one where I wasn't sure about his performance as Optimus Prime in this film. And I was pleasantly surprised. And I'm so happy that he was actually picked, you know, because I was like, ooh, major, major celebrity being cast, you know. Um, but seeing how he talked about playing the role. It, it made me more lean on to like, hmm, okay, maybe there is actually something to this. Maybe he will deliver something unique. The first 2007 movie. That one is basically a Transformers G.I. Joe movie at the end of the day. Yeah. Because of the amount of very presence in it. And if they can capture that again for the next one, I think we can have a hit here. Like, I genuinely think we might have a hit going on here. Are you counting down the days for when you change your Twitter handle to it's the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover movie? <laughs> well, I'm waiting for release date if i don't see a release date then i'm not gonna do it i'm gonna wait for a release date because a release date means it's gonna happen uh, i mean for the most part i'm I, it's just been so fun dude seeing you ratio everybody but watching you do it in a way where no one takes offense they get it they're in on the joke and i love it when people don't even get it <laughs> it just makes them more <laughs> curious to go Wait, what is this about? Um, like, I'm looking at a tweet right now. Like, I've got you in my head now when I'm looking at these tweets. There's a tweet where this is a billion times better than sex. It's when Ironhide slams on Optimus and he transforms. I just imagine you in the comment going, you know what's better than sex? <laughs> it's Transformers 1. <laughs> I'm trying to limit myself a little bit now because I felt like, you know what, there's a limit to how much you can do before people get tired of it. So I've been trying to keep it down a little bit. Maybe do it, you know, three times a day, twice a day. I used to be doing it like up to 10 times in one day i was like <laughs> well your like reply rate is really fast i it's really hard to yeah. reply to comments sometimes i have to take time to think about what i'm going to reply to because i but you, you reply so fast and it's so it's so actually nice to see that to be honest it's it's just insane to watch someone say the littlest thing and you're like a whole paragraph <laughs> <laughs> it's been very it's, it's it's like it's developed as a skill at this point i'm so good at transforming anything into a Transformers tweet. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. One quote I've seen a lot of people spread a lot. There's a hype guy in all of us, you know, and it, it just takes one person to unite that spark and spread like wildfire and uh, in a good way because a lot of Twitter is bad, you know, a lot of negative stuff and it's just been fun, you know. You, you see more Simmons to me. I see you now as that character. <laughs> It's been so fun seeing Twitter transform again. I was using the word transform because it's literally what happened uh, into this 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 thing where we're just all together, it's like trying to promote this movie and, and get it out there. It's been fun. It's been very fun. Not to mention the marketing for a second film would so much easier because you can actually put the characters you want to use in the trailer. But they've got to mess around with other things in Transformers War, like combiners, triple changes, and stuff like that. You know. We've, we got a lot of the high guard members, a lot of jets, but we need to see more characters that do more stuff. We got a lot of name drops um, in, in, in the race, <laughs> so but I hope we can see some of those characters. Yeah, exactly. There's so much more, and the guys behind it are actually Transformers fans, so I am confident that there are a lot more surprises. It feels like sometimes they could have gone a lot more with this film, but I feel like they were holding themselves back in some areas just so they could deliver a much more bigger story for the sequels. Um, so it's just the beginning, really. It's just the beginning, isn't it?
So once again, uh, it's so nice to have you on. It's so nice to have a little chat with you. And it's so nice to see the attention you've been receiving. As someone who's already met you once, you know, you were so nice and so pleasant to me when I first uh, met you at TFCon. And, you know, t time jumped by. You know, I remember seeing you around when Rise of Beast was getting all the attention and seeing that, you know, be applied for Transfers 1 as well. It's just been fun. It's made it, It's made Twitter so much more entertaining these last few weeks. <laughs> I've been hearing it a lot, and every time I see it, I'm just hot one. I'm really hot one. And I can't wait for it to start again when it comes to the Transformers sequel. <laughs> Actually, I have a little bit of time to... Um, I don't think that movie's going to come until 2027. Anyway guys, I've been Common and Cam. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to follow TF Hype Guy if you want to get all news instantly, because it is basically instantly. You get we get the news out there pretty instantly these days. Yeah, I try to be as quick as I can. Give that dude a YouTube channel. <laughs> Maybe, but that's that's a lot more work that I can I, I can I can do. I can manage my Twitter well. YouTube channel. Boy, I respect YouTubers a lot because that is a lot of work. Tell me about it. <laughs> Until the next video, guys, I've been coming to Cam, and goodbye. And goodbye as well. Uh, go watch Transformers 1 and... Buy my book! Buy my book! Before it's too late, people! You want a piece of me, Bill? You want to get wow. naked? I'm ready!